For those of you who watch the channel regularly, you'll know that I'm someone that is always messing around with hardware on the bench, whether that be upgrading the firmware on goggles, upgrading beta flight, testing new hardware, or even repairing VTXs under the microscope. As a result of this, I am always needing power to actually test the hardware, and I have a habit of reaching into my LiPo box, grabbing the first battery that I can see, and then using that to test. Unfortunately, I also have a habit of killing those batteries as well, because I forget to put a LiPo checker on it, and I end up discharging it so far that the battery becomes useless. In fact, these two here are two batteries that I have killed in the last month, simply because of my own stupidity. However, there is a solution to this, and that is a device like this. This, the P200 power supply from Toolkit RC. This power supply has been made specifically for use with drones and FPV. It not only has a USB output, it also has a fully adjustable voltage and current output with XT60 connections, allowing you to power your devices on the bench without the worry of actually discharging a battery, but also have onboard protection as well. What we'll do today is take a closer look at this power supply, I'll walk you through some of its features and capabilities, and then at the end I will give you my thoughts. Just to be clear up front, Toolkit RC have sent me this power supply for free, however they haven't seen this video before it's been published and they've had no influence in its content as always. Just before we jump forward, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons for supporting the channel, I would not have been able to make this content without your support. If you're interested in seeing more content like like this, please do check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Anyway, let's get on with the video and let's take a closer look at this power supply and see what it's actually like. So jumping into the P200, now this is an FPV centric power supply. It features AC 100 watts, DC 200 watts, USB-C up to 65 watts, and it also has a 1.54 inch IPS LCD display, which you can see on the front of the box there that shows various pieces of information, including your voltage, your current, and it will also show a little graph of that as well. If we flip over to the back of the box here, you'll find the main overall spec. So you can see it supports both AC and DC voltage input. So so AC 100 to 240 and then DC 7 to 28 volts, which is nice. You can use it in the field as well, as well as on the bench. The main output supports 1 to 10 amp max and 1 to 30 volt output all adjustable. The USB output supports 5 to 20 volts up to 65 watt max and it supports power delivery 3, 2, PPS, QC4, 3 and 2 protocols and that means you'll be able to use it with most USB-C based devices such as laptops but you can also use it to fast charge things such as your Radio Master RCs that do support that quick charge protocol as well. You can see it has that LCD, which is 1.54 inches, which is a 240 by 240 resolution. It has banana plugs on the front and it has that USB-C port for fast charge and upgrading the firmware. Opening up the box, if we lift inside, you will see that the power supply itself is actually surprisingly small. It really, really is not very large. You can see on the back that we have our main AC input, we have our DC input, a power switch and a fan. And then on the front, we have our banana plugs, we have our USB-C, our power button, our voltage, our current, and then our display up here. Also included with it, is a firmware update cable. We have our power supply cable. We have a little screen protector as well. And then you have the dedicated cables for FPV. We have an XT60 cable, which goes to just soldering ends. And then we have two crocodile clips on banana plugs as well. Okay, so just to show you this power supply in use, I've got it connected to a LiPo via the DC input and we're going to power it on. Now, once it powers up, you can see the main display shows us all of the basic information. So along the top, we've got the input voltage, the input current and the temperature. Along the bottom here, you've got the current and voltage information. So for instance, if I rotate the dial here, which is labeled A for amps, you can see we can set the current limit. And if I rotate here, the V for voltage here, you can see we can set the actual output voltage. If I then wanted to turn that output voltage on, I would simply press the voltage button once. You can see then that the large number above it goes up and then you can actually see on the scale that the voltage now kicks in and you can see it along there as there's nothing actually drawing current from it at the moment. It's not showing any draw, but you can see that kicked in. If I press it again, it then shuts that off. If we press 
the A button on this side here, this will show us the information for the USB-C output. So for instance, it will show us voltage, current, time, capacity, protocol, and the actual output state. That is currently off because there is nothing connected. However, if I just grab this little cable here with a GoPro, plug that in, you will then see that the USB output will kick in. You can see that it's drawing 5.17 volts with 1.13 amps. And then you can see the capacity counting up there as well. If we then press that again, you can now see that the USB output is shown along the top again with the voltage and the current. So it allows you to monitor that nicely. If we then wanted to put something on the main outputs here, what I'm going to do is simply plug in our two banana plugs and then I'm going to just grab a load just to show you what that looks like. I now have a VTX attached so I'm going to turn on the power to that. You can see that that VTX has powered up. We've now got the LED flashing on the side because it's one of the walk snail ones. You can just see that over there was the LED. There it is. And now you can see at the moment that it's drawing 0.15 amps and we're at 16.5 volts so we're roughly 4S voltage and you can then see that being shown on the main display there along the center. Just to quickly show you one more thing on the charging, we've currently got it hooked up to the Radio Master TX12 Mark II. This is the new radio and this one supports QC3 and you can now see at the top the USB is showing at 7.1 volts, 0.7 amp. And if we actually go into the USB menu, you can now see that this is charging via the QC3.0 protocol, just showing you that the power supply does support it, allowing you to fast charge your devices such as this radio. Finally, if we want to go into the settings options for this power supply, you simply press and hold the V button, and this brings us into the main settings for the unit. We have our step voltage up here. This allows us to set what steps the actual output voltage moves in. So for instance, we can go down to 0.05 volt steps, all the way up to 0.5. I'm going to leave it on 0.5. You have the same thing for steps in current limit. So again, 0.05 all the way up to 0.5. We've got the curve time, which is how fast it reacts, the dynamic adjustment, the lowest input voltage that the unit will take off DC, maximum operating temperature, backlight settings, beep settings, language settings, theme, factory reset, and then the firmware version information. So that is the main options that are available under there. And then we can scroll back to the top, click back, and then you can see that we've returned to the main screen showing us all the main info. Okay, so the next thing I think we'll do is do a quick bit of a teardown. Now, I'm not going to walk you through the whole process. I'm just going to show you the boards. But what we need to do is get the back off. I believe to do that, we simply remove these two screws. I had a quick look earlier. This will withdraw then from the looks of it. However, you do need to be careful because as far as I can tell, there's a lot of tight cables in there. So do be careful as you do it. But what we'll do next is get that off and take a look at both of the PCBs. Okay, so here's the main DC board. We've got our XT60, we've got a ribbon cable that goes to the display, and there's a large heat sink that goes over the top here. You can see our DC outputs, and there's a thermal pad there down the middle. If we spin it over to the bottom here, you can see the main circuitry for the board. Now, there is something I want to be clear of on this. I have actually tidied this board up a little bit at this moment in time. When I first got it, there was a little bit of residue all around here, and one or two of these solder joints didn't look 100% to me. So I have actually redone that one, 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 and that one, and that one. Everything else looked absolutely fine, but a couple of them did look a little bit dry. Unfortunately, I didn't film at that point, but now I'm showing you the bottom of the board. You can see what it looks like afterwards, but I just wanted to be clear that there was a few areas that I think the soldering could have been improved on. Now that I've done that, it looks absolutely fine. Everything else looks good. It's just those hand soldering areas, I think they probably need to work on a little bit. If we look at the AC board here, you can see our transformer, we've got our capacitors, we've got an inductor, and then you can see that there's this other board on the side that holds the caps. If I flip it over, 
Now, here's the bottom of the AC board. I have not touched this one. This is exactly as it come out the factory. You can see the flux residue there, and you can also see that little bit of residue there. That sort of stuff was what I saw on the bottom of the other board. Overall, the solder joints look fine on this. There's nothing I'm particularly concerned about. What I think I will do, though, is just give this board a little bit of a clean up before I put it back in. Okay, so it's time for me to share with you some thoughts on this power supply from Toolkit RC. Before I do that though, I just want to confirm something that I didn't mention in the unboxing, and that is that it also includes this cable here, which is an XT60 to banana plug. In the video bit that I showed you earlier, I actually missed this cable. I'd misplaced it before making that part of the video and then found it afterwards and realized that I hadn't actually included it, but they do give you this cable with the power supply, so don't worry if you do need a specific cable for the XT60, it is there, and that's one of the things that makes it a more FPV-centric product. Overall, I've spent some time with the power supply, and I have to say, it is a very, very handy bit of kit. Not only do you have a nice, small and portable variable power supply that works on both AC and DC, you also have that USB-C functionality as well, which is not only handy for charging things like your remote controllers, but also things like your laptop as well. As I showed you in the teardown, overall, the quality of the build is decent. However, as I did mention, there were a few solder joints that I felt could have been done a little bit better. Better. Sadly, the original footage that I took before I'd actually resoldered them didn't actually come out, so I ended up having to show you it afterwards. But just to confirm that there were a few that I felt could have been done a little bit better. I'm not saying they would have caused any problems, but me being me, when I see things like that, I do want to make sure that they are right. And I did touch them up before I put it back together and I showed you what that looked like afterwards. But the AC board had had no touch from me. You could just see some residue stains here and there, and it was just the odd dry joint on the hand-soldered things, so perhaps that's something Toolkit RC can improve on. Overall though, I have to say it is a very, very handy bit of kit, and if you're looking to get yourself a bench power supply, especially for FPV use, this one is well worth a look. Price-wise, the Toolkit RC P200 costs about $99 in the US, and you can get it from the likes of Team Black Sheep, or it costs about £80 in the UK from 3DXR. I think considering you're getting not only a variable bench power supply and a USB-C 65 watt power supply as well, I think it's pretty good value. Okay, so that's pretty much it from me on this one. I want to say a big thank you to Toolkit RC for sending it over. If you have found this video interesting, please do make sure you are subscribed and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without their support. If you would like to support us to be able to keep making content in the future, please do check out the link to my Patreon in the description. There's also a link there to my Discord server as well if you want to come over and say hi. Finally, if you have any comments, questions, or anything else to say on this, please do put it in the comment section. I try to answer or read every comment that is posted. And if there is anything I can help with, put it in there and I will try to answer it as soon as I possibly can. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.